Hi guys, the Crazy G here, and welcome back to another video. Now, I want to start this one by discussing what is perhaps a relatable scenario for many of you, so I just want you to imagine that you're a child again. You're sitting in the passenger seat of your parents' car, you're driving along, and then you see it. That glorious sign in the distance. It makes your eyes widen and makes your insides tingle with joy. You know you want it, you know you need it, and who could blame you? It's so damn perfect, so delicious, so wonderful. And so you turn to your parents and you beg with them, you plead with them that you must have it, but ultimately they give you those crushing words. We've got food at home. Yeah, this is the food at home. Okay, perhaps that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but let's be honest with ourselves here. When we think back to the crash kart races, which one always comes to mind first? Which one has stood the test of time and is still played often to this day? I mean, it's like comparing the Switch to the Wii U, it's a no-brainer. CTR was gold, a masterpiece some may even say. It's satisfyingly fluent, layered and smooth controls, awesome track design, all with that Crash Bandicoot flavour made it a classic to be remembered for years to come. It was kart racing perfection if you ask me, so the idea of a follow up seems interesting, but with an already high bar it would seem odd why anyone would even try to attempt a successor to such a loved game. Well that is exactly what Vicarious Visions did in 2003 with Crash Nitro Kart, the indirect sequel to Crash Team Racing. Now having a different developer behind this wasn't the most reassuring thing, but this was Vicarious Visions. The same guys who did the GBA games and who would later go on to develop the Insane trilogy. But then again, there are obviously reasons why Nitro Kart isn't as fondly remembered as its predecessor. Now I haven't played this in quite a while, several years even. But when it was revealed that every track, battle arena and character would be remade as part of the upcoming remaster of CTR Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, I decided it would be appropriate to revisit Nitro Kart in preparation and you know what? I was actually pleasantly surprised to find it was more decent than I remember it being. At the same time though, it was also a blatant reminder of why this game is not held in the same light as CTR. The story follows the Bandicoot and Cortex along with his henchmen being abducted by an alien dictator, Emperor Velo the 27th, to compete in his Galactic Racing Championship alongside two other teams led by Nitrous Oxide and Entrance, and if they refuse, he will destroy the Earth. A simple plot just needed to give a setup to the racing action, nothing special, much like CTR. Oh Z, are you just going to compare it to CTR this whole time? Uh, yeah actually, because this game tries so hard to be CTR, it's almost disturbing. Like they even tried to recreate the mask's mouth animations for fuck's sake. This was acceptable back in 1999 because of graphical limitations. It's another generation more advanced, yet you're intentionally trying to make it look bad and it comes across even worse and... You okay there, Cortex? Crash Nitro Kart in concept tries to replicate what CTR did, down to the control scheme, gameplay and game structure, but with a new story, new tracks and a different roster. Finally, I can play as a character who looks like the head of a penis. In execution, however, what we get is something that feels like a downgraded desperate attempt to be exactly like its predecessor that in some areas fails to realise what made CTR so good. Now, that does not mean to say that it's a bad game, because you know what, Nitro Kart does do a fair amount right, but what it does so well is hindered and held back by watered down elements. Take the gameplay for example, now it looks practically the same as CTR and well, from a design perspective, yeah it is. You still have all the same weapons with a few new ones thrown in there, the Wumper Fruit system here, but when it actually comes to controlling it... Okay, let me put it this way, the game doesn't control bad, but I went into this game coming straight off playing Crash Team Racing and well shit. The controls and the mechanics of CTR were arguably the main reason it was as good as it was. The fluent, fast and satisfying slickness of the carts was a sensual experience that constantly had you coming back to keep on mastering it. It was a perfect control scheme. CNK on the other hand feels like it's director DVD sequel. I'm actually impressed more than anything how they managed to make it worse. 
It has the same idea of CTR's control scheme. You still got the power slide drifting and time drift boosts, but God, it feels so much heavier and slower. Building up good speed takes longer than it should, and the way you gain and lose momentum is really inconsistent. Like, you could be going at full speed, but the slightest grades against an edge will cause you to come to a grinding halt. The reserve system I don't even think is there, it's quite hard to tell. Gone is that fluent and smooth feel that made chaining together drifts and jumps to maintain a constant flow of speed so satisfying. Again, it's not terrible, it's still perfectly playable, but it is a jarring experience coming straight into this and having to adapt to it right after playing CTR. The difference is night and day. It's perhaps the biggest downside to Nitro Kart, and I genuinely believe that it might be the main reason why the game is not as widely remembered or replayable as CTR. When the game is trying so hard to replicate what CTR did so well, and yet makes one of its most, if not the most crucial aspect worse, then it's not an easy issue to ignore. And it's a shame that the controls let this game down because it detracts from the overall kart racing experience. Especially when the level design is really good. The tracks are definitely Nitro Kart's strongest feature, and after replaying it recently, I feel like they are on par with CTR's level design. Now, it does clearly take inspiration from CTR. I mean, there are tracks that really echo those from Team Racing. But I wouldn't necessarily say that's a bad thing, and even though they may share a similar track concept, they do manage to set them themselves apart enough. Nitro Kart even introduces some new design aspects with the anti-gravity system. How's that entirely original idea doing for you, Nintendo? Okay, to be fair, Mario Kart 8 does implement this mechanic in its tracks a lot better. Since with the Nitro Kart tracks, the moments when it does use anti-gravity can be hit or miss. At times it acts as a creative and interesting section of track to race on. At others though, it can feel like an unnecessary winding and disorienting mishmash that kind of kills the flow of track somewhat. Even then, if the game didn't feel slow enough, driving on the antigraph sections is comparable to watching paint dry. But even in those instances, the tracks are still good overall and even set themselves apart with different settings to that of CTR. They're themed after the four worlds from the adventure mode, with three tracks per world and then one grand finale track. The first world is Terra, a jungle-esque world. Here we have Inferno Island, a solid starting track, not quite as memorable as Crash Cove, but still good. Jungle Boogie is a great track, set in these treetops with a great design and a well-implemented shortcut. And finally, Tiny Temple, an okay track, kind of trying to be a glorified version of Tiger Temple with perhaps one of the most pointless implementations of the anti-gravity. The second world is Barren, a snowy world. We got Meteor Gorge, a really well done track design, albeit kind of lacking visually. Barren Ruins, probably one of my least favourite tracks in the game. I don't know, I mean, it's fine, but it's just not that memorable to me. And then Deep Sea Driving, essentially ruse tubes on steroids, and this huge anti-gravity loop tube is pretty cool. The third world is Phenomena, a world based around time and... I don't know, LSD maybe? Here we've got Out of Time, a fantastic track with plenty of winding turns and perhaps the best use of the anti-gravity in the game. Clockwork Wumper, another brilliant track, clearly taking notes from Cortex Castle, it has a great visual style and that sharp, challenging layout. And finally Thunderstruck, a really cool looking track that's kind of let down by the really messy anti-graph sections. The final world is Techni, a futuristic robotic world. You've got Assembly Lane, a pretty good track with some elements of both Engine Labs and Tiny Arena, and a decently done anti-graph part at the end. Android Alley, another solid track, but again with anti-graph elements that just seem really pointless, as well as the shittiest track hazard ever with this bastard train. Then we have Electron Avenue, a track with okay anti-graph sections, but overall a really solid track with a great scale to it. Finally, everything culminates in the Hyper Spaceway, a fucking awesome track that not only excels in design, but also spectacle, a brilliant finale track. It just sucks that the control mechanics are so dumbed down, because it feels like you never get to experience these tracks to their full potential. Because these are tracks that are really fun and that also shine in their unique visuals, and in fact the game has some really good presentation overall. Despite the fact that I think the designs of the Crash characters are probably some of their ugliest renditions, everything else looks great. With this kind of cartoony, bordering on cell shaded art style, the game looks really good for the time, and manages to give the game its own distinct presentation style to CTR. Along with the music of course, which I think is good, not quite Joshua Mansell good, but it has its own quirky charm to it. 
This all, however, does create an overall tone for the game that might seem a bit unattached from Crash Bandicoot. With the characters being the only real connection here, it actually makes me appreciate just how well CTR utilised the Crash license with tracks based on the original trilogy's levels. Nitro Kart, while still containing Crash elements embedded here and there, mostly goes all out and does its own thing with the story and setting. Now, that's not a bad thing by any means, hell, all to them for trying out something new, but it was just something that really struck me while playing. It is especially evident in the game's roster of characters. There's 16 overall this time, and they're separated into four teams of four for the game's new team mechanic in which you have another character of the same team in a race, and staying close to them fills up your team meter that, when activated, allows you a short burst of constant power-ups. You got Team Bandicoot, Team Cortex, Team Oxide and Team Trance. And while the majority of the characters are returning ones, we do get some new ones like Crunch Bandicoot and Dr. N Trance. And hey, even Nitrous Oxide, but why the hell would I want to play as him in this sorry state? It is kind of odd though, again, seeing so many character omissions, like the back of the box states that you can play as virtually any character in the Crash universe. Yeah, and by virtually they mean none of these series staples, but instead these two Space Jam rejects. And yet again we begin with only 8, but unlock more through playing the adventure mode, finally leaving each team with one final secret character to unlock. Pura is unlocked by simply building up a chain of 50 boosts in the adventure mode as Team Bandicoot, and Fake Crash is done by doing the exact same thing as Team Cortex. Entropy returns once again in the game's time trial mode, where you have to race his ghost and beating him on every track unlocks him as a playable character. After that you have to race the Velo ghost, and yeah, fuck that shit. Speak of the devil, the final secret character is Velo in his real form, and he is unlocked upon completing the adventure mode in its 100% entirety twice. Once as Team Bandicoot and once as Team Cortex. That just seems like stupid effort. And yet the fact that I've unlocked him clearly indicates that I wasted my time doing that. And that is not that easy a task, as the adventure mode can be quite time consuming. It follows the exact same structure as CTR's adventure, racing each world's trophy races, facing a boss along with the return of CTR challenges now called CNK challenges and relic races. Except this time with one little twist, as I alluded to just a moment ago, you don't actually select one character to play as, but instead a team of three characters. Each one with a certain stat advantage of acceleration, speed or turning, allowing you to choose before each race the racer most suited to the challenge. That's kinda cool. The mode takes you through the four hub worlds, each one with its own new champion character as a boss. Terra has Krunk, a completely original character who bears no resemblance to any other Crash character whatsoever. Baron's champion is Nash, a shark out of water who needs to be constantly moving to stay alive. Phenomena's champion is Norm, and he is... Okay, fuck knows what Norm is. Perhaps his cutscene would care to elaborate. Okay, that... that just raises more questions. Techni's champion is Geary, a robot obsessed with cleaning, and then finally we have a grand finale against Velo. I will admit though that I do prefer the boss races in CNK to CTR, since each boss has their own unique weapon to use against you, and because the AI is a bit more competitive and aggressive. Hell, the final race against Velo can be a bollock buster at times. The AI overall is a bit more challenging this time around in every mode, arcade, time trial and multiplayer. And well, if I'm being honest, I've kind of run out of things to say about the game. Before I wrap this all up though, I do want to say that I did enjoy my time with Crash Nitro Kart. On its own, it's a good kart racer with some fantastic tracks, but... The thing is, it's very difficult to judge CNK as its own game. It feels inevitable that it will always be compared to CTR, hell, I've mentioned CTR 25 times already in this video. It's hard to judge Nitro Kart as its own thing when it tries so hard to be CTR. Attempting to replicate that winning formula to a T, but unfortunately making elements much worse really dragging down the game's better aspects. It's not a bad game, it's decent, more decent than I I remember it being in fact. But for what it's trying to achieve, it does some aspects brilliantly and some with about as much grace as Cortex's face.
But in the end, I'm so glad that all the good aspects that Nitro Kart had will get their time to shine in the upcoming remake. Experiencing these great tracks with not only the great visual uphaul that Beanox have given them, but with these CTR physics will be an amazing experience. As well as all the additional Nitro Kart characters who will not be taking the place of CTR characters, but standing alongside them, and that is just great. And with that, I can finally rest easy knowing that I've covered all the crash racing content I've wanted to before the release of Nitro Fueled. I'd rather die. Thanks very much for watching everyone, like and subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.